last night camping at the cove which just is an inlet in from Lake Superior wonderful water very sweet Lake Superior uh, is really clean water but there was a guy that grew up on the island he was in a boat he had a couple of friends and they were he was taking them on a tour of the islands in the area but he he actually grew up on our royal and uh, has been coming back here for more than 50 years but talking with him and hearing his stories he had a great story about a moose he said that he was he used to run these trails he got this new thing called an iPod and he had downloaded some podcasts and he was listening to them as he was running and uh, he was playing with his little device wasn't looking where he was going and ran right into the rear end of a big bull moose he <laughs> said he stumbled backwards the moose scared him he took off running and uh, said he didn't kick him he just took off running and uh, hilarious <laughs> he also I was asking him about these names so the, all of them are so interesting and said you know Macargo Cove how did the name Macargo and uh, his story was that during the Civil War there was a Confederate warship that got up in here somehow and uh, all of the locals were looking for it and the captain his name was Captain McCargo and he would put his little dinghy boats out as sort of a sounding so he could know where to sail that big old ship up to the center of the channel and he came and hid in the cove and he would hide back into the uh, into the different little inlets in the cove and, and hid out from them so they named it Macargo Cove after him fascinating if it's true or if it's legend I don't know but I love hearing his stories uh, more moose stories that another couple told me uh, he had been a ranger here on the island and then he started working in maintenance on the island uh, their names were Fred and Marsha Young and Fred was telling me that he's out one day on the trail and there's a big bull moose was making its moose sound whatever that is and so he sort of stood off and started imitating him well he called in another young bull moose and they were coming toward him on each side he shimmied up a little spruce tree and he showed me the it was like a maybe maybe four inches in diameter shimmied up this little spruce tree he said he couldn't get up very high that he was about the head height from the big bull moose and he said these two moose came and stood side by side right there at his feet until all of a sudden they locked horns and he said it was over before it started the the younger bull moose decided he didn't want any of that and he took off so while they were fighting the bigger one he said he turned his head and he said one eye just stared at at this uh, at fred he said there they are eye to eye staring at each other and uh, but the moose didn't care he was going to get rid of the other competition in the area so this younger boom younger moose took off and then uh, he lumbered away and fred came down out of the tree so <laughs> what what stories to tell from this place same way last night where I, where I was at the beaver dam and uh, watching the beaver it was I'd gone on into camp and about three hours later a young couple had come in and uh, he they said they had gotten delayed for about 40 minutes because 
they were walking by that beaver dam and a cow moose and her calf looked up. They were eating on the back side of the dam and they looked up and said they were about 20 feet from them. So they stopped, backed off, and then here comes a big bull moose and he just stood in the, in the trail, in the middle of the trail and stood there for 20, 30 minutes before he lumbered away. Well, you can see blue skies back that way. Look at him here. Isn't that pretty lake? It's just gorgeous. Dan was saying that if you look out on the lakes and you see sort of a smooth, big rock, you need to stop and watch it because it might be a moose. They apparently dip down and feed on the grass that grows on the bottoms of the lakes. And he said they can hold their breath for 15 minutes while they're eating. I guess they're like land whales. Isn't that pretty? There's a break in the clouds. There's blue sky. Not supposed to last, but I'll take it. hard to keep on going because you come across so many beautiful things and if you don't slow down and stop and and look at them you miss so look at all this here is the lake that I was walking by I came up here on top of the ridge so I could get a better look so glad I did there it all is I don't know if you can see it but I even get a rainbow isn't that neat Let's get on the trail. So here's a moose track. There's my hand. It's as big as my hand. That's just a skill. We've arrived at Little Todd Harbor. Uh, the approach down to the to the campsite was the worst part of this section of the trail. It was it was sort of rough getting down in here, but that's. We got here and uh, I have set up my tent and here's here's my tent since I'm getting stuff in it and then here's my view for the night it's through Lake Superior can you beat that